Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Friday, November 17th. A couple sleeps away from the Jaguars taking on the Titans at home. Your Jacksonville Jaguars there, 6-3, and three, taking on a Titans team that has lost three of the last four games. Offensively, when we're talking about this football game, talking about keys to victory, I think you have to look more prepared pre-snap. They're going to try to throw some confusing looks at you like the 49ers did last week. They're going to try to take away your first read. They're going to try to take away the quick game stuff. You have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to throw some counters. You have to be ready for what they're throwing at you. You know what the Titans like to do. Obviously, Mike Vrabel is a great defensive coordinator and, and, and Shane Bowen, his actual DC, fantastic defensive coaches. They are. But you have more talent than them. You have enough time to get ready for this game. Doug Peterson, Press Taylor, Trevor Lawrence, get some counters. Get some some tendency breakers, right, involved in this game plan. And the rest of the offense needs to be ready as well. When you have these looks where you get up to the line of scrimmage and Trevor Lawrence needs to change something up, tried to do it last week and the offense looked completely discombobulated. You have got to be more prepared for this football game offensively from a mental standpoint, okay? Also, I think you don't quit on the running game. I'm not saying you got to run the ball as much as you pass it, uh, but they really quit on it last week, and I don't think that's ever going to be a recipe for success, at least not with this current iteration of the Jacksonville Jaguars. you got to have some level of balance because at this point, Travis Etienne, he is your biggest big play threat. He's a guy that finds the end zone more than anyone else. He's a guy that busts off big plays more than anyone else. So I think you've got to make sure that you are getting Travis Etienne the ball. Again, you don't have to run it nearly as much as you pass it, but you cannot quit entirely on the running game, in my opinion. And look, in these high-intensity moments, you have to remember that ball control and ball security is the number one thing. And the Jaguars coaching staff, I know they preach it, I know for a fact that that is their number one teaching point, their number one rule on offense. But the amount of turnovers in enemy territory and in the red zone has been damning for the Jaguars' offense this year, quite frankly. I mean, just based off of turnovers in field goal range, they probably have about 30 more points on the board so far this year, right? They have got, and that's just off field goals. If they scored touchdowns on these drives, completely different thing. So they've got to take care of the football in enemy territory and in the red zone. I mean, it's just been a catastrophe in that regard so far, the amount of turnovers they've had. Lastly for me, offensively, get Calvin Ridley the damn ball. The Jaguars are undefeated when he has eight or more targets in a game. They have scored 28 points per game per outing that they have targeted Calvin Ridley eight or more times. He is your best receiver. Find ways to get him the football, period. Good things happen when Calvin Ridley has the football. Get him the football. It's not that complicated. You have seen this Jaguars offense in the past figure out ways to dial it up for specific players. They have not been doing that very well for Calvin Ridley, in my opinion, and that needs to change. I think you also need to get Evan Ingram involved and and do it without just giving him three-yard targets. Like Get him down the field a little bit more. He's got great athleticism. All right. Defensively, looking at the Jaguars, not a great performance last week, obviously, but the defense has been kind of the bedrock of what the Jaguars do well in 2023. Mistakes in coverage can lead to touchdowns. You need to play assignment sound football on the back end. The Texans and 49ers both got the Jags to make mental and communication mistakes on the back end. You got to cut that crap out. Cannot have it. And now you might be able to get away with it this week more than you have against some of these other teams, Texans and 49ers. But you've got to be more mentally sharp. You're now halfway through the season, more than halfway through the season. You've got to be on your P's and Q's mentally without question. Obviously, it all starts with stopping the run against the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry, unbelievable. Will Levis is not playing very well. His pass protection is a hot mess right now. If you stop Derrick Henry by playing with intensity, by rallying to the football, by playing gap sound against the run, force them to throw, I don't think Will Levis is going to survive this game looking very good. And again, when throwing, harass that man. Harass Will Levis. Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen, they have been playing very well lately. They have been producing 
a lot of pressures. Josh Allen has been doing it all year. He's one of the top sack guys in the NFL this year. Trayvon Walker has really turned it up as a rusher over the last four or five games. Will Levis is not going to hang in the pocket and make the same throws that Brock Purdy was last week. I don't think Brock Purdy would be able to do that again. I think it was incredible what he did last week against the Jaguars with guys draped all over him. Make that guy throw with pressure in his face. Go hit him and get some sacks as well, right? The Titans' pass pass pro has been abysmal, and they've been dealing with injuries. They've had a talent talent deficit already, you know, before the injury struck on the offensive line. Go get the job done if you're Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. This should be a banner day. We've seen Josh Allen do it against the Titans in the past. Also, special teams was not great last week. Get it sharpened up. Uh, Overall, the Jaguars have a fantastic special teams unit. Get it sharpened up. Obviously, no Jamal Agnew this week. You're hoping to get... Parker Washington back out on the field, but either way, get it cleaned up. It was really just about mental mistakes for the most part. Logan Cook did have an ugly punt early, but uh, just get special teams cleaned up. You got a good special teams unit. Heath Farrell was a great special teams coordinator. I think the Jaguars have the coaching. Mike Caldwell's done a fantastic job this year, in my opinion, as a defensive coordinator. I think Doug Peterson and Press Taylor can get the offense going. Um, I think they have the coaching to get this thing turned around and it's funny to say get this thing turned around when you're six and three right but uh, the five game win streak was slightly fraudulent they were not playing great football during that five game winning streak and they got exposed against the 49ers get it flipped back going in the right direction get your defense playing the way it's been playing most of the year and figure some things out on offense in my opinion and you'll be just fine down the stretch if you're the Jaguars but you've got to defend the freaking bank you are one and three at home in front of your hometown fans unacceptable you got to show some pride right show some pride in what you're doing in front of your hometown fans if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend go get it done get to seven and three and then you have a big date with the Houston Texans the following game but again just go one and oh in week 11 you'll be just fine really appreciate y'all tuning in hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo follow Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube check out genjag.com slash shop pick up some new Duval gear Y'all have a good one.